Very exciting news today because it's not too often that we get to take a look at an all new Polaris side by side and that's exactly what we have here today. The all new generation of Polaris's Razer XP. This is the 2024 Polaris Razer XP. And that's a big deal because the Polaris Razer XP is Polaris's best selling sport side by side. It's a really popular option in this segment of side by side. So this is an all new generation. It's not just a facelift and we're going to get into everything that makes this brand new and it starts with the chassis. Yeah, one of the biggest key points for this new Razer is durability. Polaris really wanted to focus on making this stronger, more reliable, and that starts with a stiffer chassis. So Polaris says that this is 25% stronger um, than the outgoing generation. And there's also a lot of new and improved parts. So the drive line's been re reinforced. It has stronger half shafts, stronger prop shafts, stronger bearings, um, and that goes right down to the powertrain too. Um, this has a new mounting and ducting for the CVT, so they run cooler, and that should increase belt life, which I know is something that a lot of people with these machines are concerned about. Yeah, it's definitely been a point of contention in the past, so it's good to see that they're working toward just making their CVT system more durable, longer belt life. Uh, there's also a new design for the front bumper and skid plate to protect more of the side-by-sides running gear. Um, and there's new styling as well. Yeah, I mean, this definitely looks like the last generation. Yeah, if you're... it's perfectly recognizable as a razor, but you can definitely see, especially around the door and around the tail, uh, different different design, different lines. Yeah. But if... the front end especially looks very familiar. Yeah, especially with the headlights and that, you know, the grill shape where um, all the cooling comes in. Definitely looks very similar to the outgoing model, but like you said, then you start looking at the doors, everything's a little more swoopy, some more curves in there, and the tail end does look definitely a little bit different, but you can recognize right off the bat that this is a Razor, and there's no doubting that, which is a good thing. It's also running Walker Evans Racing shocks, and that is, of course, a brand familiar to Polaris. Uh, these are the adjustable needle shocks, 20.5 inches of travel, so a solid amount of travel, and 14 and a half inches of ground clearance. Yeah, which is one inch more than the outgoing model, so pretty good there. And the interior has been redesigned too, so Polaris says you get better legroom now. So the front seats, they're one inch lower to the ground, they're also 1.5 inches further back. And that gives a sportier driving position, more legroom, uh, but the rear seats have also been raised two inches higher for better passenger visibility, so you have more of that stadium seating effect. The previous generation had that too, but now it's a little more enhanced. Yeah, and it's always nice to have some extra visibility as a passenger, that way you just know what's coming, you can brace for it. It's going to make your experience in the back seat more enjoyable. And if you're taking your family out in one of these machines, you wanna make sure that they're having a good time too, or else it's probably gonna cut your day short. So Polaris even said that they don't want that to happen. So this is part of the reason that they've redesigned the seating. Uh, but something interesting that they did with the interior is it appears like there is no more instrument cluster in front of the driver. Yeah, and I don't know that that's a huge deal because, you know, most of the time when you're using these, especially in Colorado, you're out on the trail. The, there are some places where, you know, these are street legal and you might want to know exactly how fast you're going on the road, but um, that'll all be accessible through the center screen. And when you're out ripping in the desert or going through a trail, do you really need all that info right in front of your line of sight or is it better to see the trail? Some people are gonna love it, yeah. some people are gonna hate it. That's kind of up to you whether or not you think there should be an instrument cluster there. Yeah, it's definitely a point of preference. Uh, and let us know in the comments what you guys think. I kind of like just having more in my line of sight, something I can easily and quickly glance down at to let me know uh, anything that I might need to know. Of course, you'll still have access to that information. They're not going to make it so that you can't find out what's going on with your vehicle. But it is, in my opinion, kind of nice to have that in front of you. But let us know. Maybe, maybe people will like this better. Yeah, we'll see. Um, there's also a new engine, so very similar engine to what we had in the previous generation. It's still a 999cc ProStar engine. They call this the Gen 2 ProStar engine. Uh, dual overhead cam, twin cylinder, makes 114 horsepower, which is up on power a little bit uh, compared to the 107 horsepower you got in the previous generation. Yeah, and of course, a similar all-wheel drive system, uh, but a new lower geared transmission. Like we mentioned, they also updated the CVT system. 
Uh, there's also a new winch mounting location for the Pro HD 4,500 pound winch. Um, and you have a pivoting spare tire carrier that doesn't apparently, according to Polaris, sacrifice cargo space. Yeah, it kind of sits up on top of the bed, so it's on like a strut system that you can pivot out of the way to still gain access to your bed, and then you still retain all that bed space. Um, but it does look like that's going to be an option since, you know, a lot of these machines we're showing you don't have that installed. Yeah, and then, of course, in terms of those essential electronics, you have a lot of options. Uh, you can, of course, have the Rockford Fosgate audio system. Polaris has been working with Rockford Fosgate for a long time. Also, tons of other accessories that you can add, just like the old model. But something nice that they did improve is with the new cab design, you can have it set up so that it seals better than it used to. So you can do a heater and you can install these really cool upper doors that help seal the cab so that if you're flinging up mud, and your family isn't into that kind of thing, then you can seal it off. Part of the reason, apparently, that the new cab is able to seal better is the A-pillar design is a little more of a, a straight line instead of a curve, um, and just a flat surface for that cab to, to mount up to. So yeah, it should seal off a little better, and just like the old model, you're gonna have coolers and spare tire carriers and you know light bars and mirrors and all kinds of stuff you can put on these um, to make them suit your needs for whatever you're using it for. Yeah, there's boatloads of accessories that you can add, and there are four specific accessory collections, actually. Yeah, there's trail, backcountry, mud, and all season. So depending on what you're using it for, it'll set you up with different accessories um, straight from the factory with everything you need. And one of the cool new accessories is a tonneau cover, which is the first time that's actually been done in the side-by-side in side -side industry. So there's a cargo bed in the back, now there's a cover for that bed, so if you're ripping through the desert and you know sand is likely to make it into all your cargo area, you can seal off all your stuff, maybe throw some clothes or your lunch back there, and it's definitely gonna be a little more protected than any previous generation. Yeah, and I'm surprised that this is the first tunnel covers are making it into the side-by-side -side industry because a lot of the features that are coming out and have been coming out on side-by-sides follow the truck industry fairly closely, obviously not quite as aggressively in terms of innovation and new tech, but uh, I mean, tunnel covers seem like a pretty obvious thing to have. So it's nice to see that it's an option for this. Yeah, and I mean, this isn't the first time covered storage has been done in the side-by-side no, -side yeah, there's, world. There's locking boxes and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, but there's plenty of that. A little bit of a different approach here, so that's cool. Yeah, that's pretty much everything that's new. So, new design, more durable, more accessories, new yeah. engine with more power. Um, and yeah, I, th I think the biggest thing here is going to be seeing how these hold up and hopefully... The CVT makes a big improvement, and yeah. we'll see some some good stuff come out of that. It's good to see that they're focused on durability because the worst part of any vehicle is having to do maintenance. So if you just have something that doesn't need repairs as often, you can run it harder. It's going to be a lot more fun and a lot less of a headache. And these are going to be available starting in April. They're going to have two and four seat configurations like in the past and in three trims, Sport, Premium, and Ultimate. Sport starts at $20,999, and the premium starts at $22,999. What does that premium get you? Yeah, so the premium, you're gonna get a painted body with premium graphics, 30-inch tires, Trailmaster tires versus the 29-inch tires you get on the base model. You get a color match dash, a PMX head unit, and Rockford Fosgate Stage 1 audio, a poly roof, and four-point harnesses versus the more standard seat belts you get in the base model. And then you can step all the way up to the Ultimate, and that starts at 25999 gets two-tone paint and graphics. Seven-inch touchscreen with Ride Command, which is a really nice system to have. You get the Rockford Fosgate Stage 2 audio system, front and rear LED accent lighting, a 900-watt charging system for tying in accessories with uh, Polaris Pulse Ports is what they call it. So just a lot of extra features if you want some of those bells and whistles you want that nice ride command system and better audio then you can step up but uh, you know another five thousand dollars from the base model is not negligible it's, it's a yeah that's a considerable amount of money exactly and you know just like with all these models in the past you can definitely go for the lower end sport trim and build it up and into what you want um so yeah, there's something for everyone. Three different trims, four different accessory packages, and two different seating configurations. So a lot of different models to choose from here. Yeah, and 
while we're excited to see this release of this coming out, we're gonna be even more excited to actually get our hands on it and get a chance to pilot one of these, especially coming into spring. Our course at, uh, at Tumbleweed Ranch is going to be melting off pretty soon here. So good opportunities for us to get out and off road. That video will be coming hopefully this spring. Yeah, definitely. Stay tuned for that. We also just did a really cool um, four by four versus six by six side by side comparison up at the ranch. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. A um, lot of exciting stuff. The side by sides coming this spring. So stay tuned. Got all new models to look at and head on over to alttfl.com so you don't miss anything in the power sports world. We'll see you in the next video.